All right, so good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this press conference. Today with us, we have Sean Fraser, Minister of Housing, Infrastructure and Communities, and Soraya martinez Farada, Minister of Tourism and responsible for the Economic Development Agency of Canada and the regions of Quebec. Uh, they are here with us today regarding a housing update. We are going to start the press conference, then we will go over to the virtual room for questions. The floor is yours. Excellent. Thank you so much. Bon après-midi et bienvenue. Good afternoon. <coughs> it's a pleasure to be here to make this announcement together with my colleague, Soraya Martinez. We engage again today on an important announcement that's going to help us build more homes. Uh, as I indicated yesterday uh, during the uh, announcement we shared in Nova Scotia and again uh, this morning, uh, we have been advancing a number of policies to help address the national housing crisis. And in advance of the federal budget, we'll be publishing a comprehensive suite of policies uh, that are meant to solve the housing crisis. Uh, today, uh, we are focusing on a few key policies that are going to help us uh, build more homes to uh, address the supply gap that the country is facing. Uh, it's important to uh, understand the scale uh, of what's been announced today. Uh, an injection of an additional $15 billion to the apartment construction loan program is going to help build tens of thousands of additional units, bringing the total under the program to more than 130,000, uh, assuming uh, federal participation alone. Uh, this particular program is already uh, supporting tens of thousands of uh, apartments uh, right across the country, uh, and today's announcement is going to help that achieve a new scale. In addition to uh, putting additional uh, financial support into the program, uh, we're going to be changing some of the eligibility requirements that will allow uh, builders to build more quickly and more easily with the support of the federal government. Uh, some of those changes uh, include extending the terms of the agreements, which could reduce the monthly payment to free up capital for builders who are struggling in some ways to uh, operate in a high interest rate environment. Uh, some of the changes we've made previously are going to make it easier to use the program to build student residences or seniors apartments. We also are introducing a portfolio approach to the program that's going to allow builders who may take on multiple projects to file a single application. And we're introducing flexibility to the eligibility criteria so they can achieve those criteria across the portfolio buildings rather than on each individual building. Uh, we will also be adopting a frequent builder stream uh, that'll have a streamlined application process for those builders who are familiar uh, with the program and who have a history of delivering the results. Uh, it's important to understand as well that this is not just a financing program. The federal government uh, extracts commitments from home builders in exchange for market beating interest rates that guarantee a certain level of affordability will be achieved in the uh, new apartments that they build. Uh, specifically, this program is designed to ensure that there are more units available for uh, middle class households. Uh, if you are a teacher or a firefighter or a construction worker, uh, you should be able to afford a place to live in the community that you work. Uh, the way that this program helps achieve that outcome is by putting low cost financing on the table in exchange for a commitment that a certain proportion of the overall number of units will be offered at uh, rent that it reflects the median income in that particular housing market. Now, in addition to the changes and the investments through the uh, apartment construction loan program, we're also moving forward with a new and important initiative called Canada Builds. This program is going to use the apartment construction loan program to partner with provinces and territories that will allow them to scale up home building on priority areas. This is based on the model that we achieved through an agreement with the provincial government of British Columbia through the BC Builds program that focused on middle class workforce housing. Now, in some of my conversations with other provinces, they've expressed some interest in pursuing a deal, although the range of different kinds of projects they may wish to target uh, vary in nature. Some will include uh, more seniors' apartments, some will include more student residences, and others as well have indicated a preference to work on middle-class workforce housing. In particular, we're going to ask provinces who wish to strike a deal with the federal government through the Canada Builds program to do a number of things. Uh, one is to cost match, uh, put money on the table so we can scale up the impact this particular program is going to have. We also will request provinces to make available public lands, many of whom are seeking to find the best way to do that now. And by marrying together our various initiatives, we'll be able to achieve more. We're also going to seek reductions in timelines for approval as part of the initiative to ensure we're not just building 
at some distant point in the future, but can achieve progress much more quickly. And of course, we'll insist that the affordability criteria baked into the program that assures the homes that are being constructed are within reach for middle-class households are, are achieved through any deal. Uh, the total impact of this program before we consider uh, the provincial involvement is in excess of 130,000 homes across Canada. And we believe that by partnering with and leveraging resources of provincial governments, we can achieve an even greater degree of success through this program. Uh, merci tout le monde, c'est un plaisir d'être ici et uh, je passe les paroles à ma collègue uh, ministre Martinez Ferrara. Thank you, uh, thank you, Sean. Merci beaucoup, Sean. Bonjour tout le monde. Alors, bien écoutez, un peu comme le ministre Fraser nous faisait part de nos jours, un trop grand nombre de jeunes s'inquiètent encore de l'accès au logement et aussi de l'accès à la propriété, ce que nos parents et anciennes générations n'avaient pas. Le budget fédéral de 2024 mise en fait sur la question de l'équité, l'équité en matière de logement et bien sûr l'accessibilité et l'abordabilité de ces logements. J'aimerais rappeler rapidement les annonces que nous avons faites déjà. Donc, nous avons commencé sur la question du droit au logement, donc de parler d'une charte du droit des locataires, mais aussi de donner à ces locataires l'accessibilité à avoir accès à une propriété en faisant en sorte que la cote de crédit des locataires tienne compte des paiements de loyer qui sont effectués à temps. Et bien sûr, nous avons aussi annoncé un fonds de protection des locataires pour justement donner les moyens euh, aux organisations qui viennent défendre le droit des locataires. Nous avons par la suite fait des annonces au niveau des infrastructures. Comme vous le savez, on ne peut pas mettre sur pied un logement si les infrastructures ne sont pas là pour accueillir ces logements. Donc, nous avons annoncé un investissement important de 6 milliards de dollars pour créer un nouveau fonds canadien pour la construction de logements. Euh, et ça, ça va être aussi accompagné, comme disait euh, euh, le ministre, de euh, garantie d'élimination des obstacles à la construction de logements. Et nous avons, euh, bien sûr, euh, fait des annonces en lien avec la construction de nouveaux logements. Nous avons annoncé une bonification de 400 millions sur le fonds d'accélération du logement. Et aujourd'hui, nous avons lancé le programme Bâtir au Canada, un programme qui se base un peu sur l'expérience que nous avons eue en Colombie-Britannique, où le programme de, de prêt pour la construction d'appartements va miser sur des partenariats avec les provinces. Ces partenariats peuvent être d'une région à l'autre différents selon les besoins des provinces, mais elle va miser à prioriser les projets. De une part, il y aura euh, des euh, conditions et ces conditions seront à l'effet que l'argent doit être un levier. Donc, on souhaite que les provinces puissent accoter le montant d'argent qui va être euh, euh, sur lequel on va s'entendre, euh, mettre sur, euh, sur euh, la, la table aussi des terrains publics qui, sont, euh, qui peuvent être utilisés pour la construction de logements. Bien sûr, diminuer le temps d'approbation et d'attente de permis pour la construction et finalement s'assurer que l'abordabilité du logement demeure la priorité euh, des gouvernements et des ententes que nous allons euh, signer ensemble. En plus, aujourd'hui, on souhaite donner un coup de main aux constructeurs et aux promoteurs pour inciter la construction de logements. Donc, euh, on a ajouté au programme de prêt de la construction de logements 15 milliards de dollars en prêt pour s'assurer que on peut augmenter le nombre de, lo de logements et la, 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 les unités de logement, on parle d'à peu près 30 000 nouveaux logements qui pourront être y associés. Également, dans ce programme, on vise une réforme importante. Ces réformes vont donner une capacité de prolonger les, la durée des prêts dans un contexte financier actuel et économique actuel. C'est une bonne incitative pour les constructeurs de construire plus de logements. On veut inciter aussi de la construction de logements pour les étudiants et les aînés. Avoir une approche aussi de portfolio, donc de permettre à des constructeurs de confiance qui sont assidus d'avoir plusieurs projets en même temps, mais aussi euh, de les aider à diminuer les délais d'approbation de projets pour qu'on puisse ensemble euh, faire plus de projets le plus rapidement possible. Je pense que là, ce qu'il faut se rappeler des annonces qu'on fait aujourd'hui, c'est que la, la crise du logement, il n'y en a pas une solution, il y a plusieurs solutions, mais c'est une responsabilité de tous les paliers de gouvernement, du privé, des OBNL, à ce qu'on travaille tous ensemble pour augmenter le nombre et l'offre de logements abordables partout au pays et ce, le plus rapidement possible. 
Alors, merci. Merci beaucoup. On va pouvoir commencer la période de questions pour les journalistes en ligne. C'est une question, une question de suivi. On va débuter avec Mackenzie Gray de Global News. Uh, hello, Minister Frazier. Um, just more of a clarification question. With the $15 billion, uh, is this $15 billion that the government is spending, or is this just loans that uh, companies will be able to access uh, at the Government of Canada financing rate? Uh, these are repayable loans, uh, as is the case through the existing uh, apartment construction loan program. So no additional money uh, being spent today, unlike yesterday, just from a clarification perspective there. Um, and then kind of tying back in with uh, yesterday's announcement, uh, we've already seen a number of premiers um, not pleased with the idea of uh, the, the federal government mandating fourplexes being put in place, Doug Ford being one of them. Um, can you explain to me how your new plans that have been announced in the last few days are kind of forcing provinces to implement a number of uh, ideas that the federal government like to be done, both at the municipal uh, and provincial level, is different than the Polyev plan, which would, in essence, punish uh, cities that don't build enough or don't implement things that they want done? Uh, certainly. And, and first, Mackenzie, before I get to the, uh, the, the substantive question that you've asked, I'd just like to... Uh, uh, Disagree uh, politely, of course, uh, with your characterization that there's no uh, additional spend with the additional $15 billion. Uh, of course, when we pass on a, a preferential rate of interest, uh, that is something that comes with real net present value as compared to the market rate. Uh, so there is uh, obviously uh, an important component of this. But to your point, that money does get repaid, which is why we can uh, work with such substantive amounts. Uh, second, uh, this is a very different approach uh, that comes uh, from the proposals that we've seen from the the uh, Conservative Party under Pierre Polyev. Uh, there are measures that we've put on the table and incentives that we've created uh, that invite provinces and territories to take advantage of federal funding to make changes that we know are within their control. Uh, to the extent that there is some commonalities around a desire to build more homes near transit, um, certainly you can uh, point to some agreement on where some of the challenges lie. Although I do find it curious that since we've seen certain Conservatives express opposition to this approach, uh, Mr. Polyev appears to have have uh, disappeared on the issue altogether. Uh, but there's a number of uh, distinct differences between the plan that we've put on the table and the uh, measures that have been proposed by Mr. Polyev. Uh, though we might agree there should be more apartments near transit stations, I haven't seen him in his plan that he has published indicate the specifics around eliminating parking minimums within walking distance, around the density within 800 meters of post-secondary institutions, around housing needs assessments. I haven't seen him match us when it comes to the tax relief that we're providing to new apartment construction. In fact, we've removed the GST that he wants to put back on on hundreds of thousands of middle class homes. When it comes to a proposal such as the Housing Accelerator Fund, which operates through a similar model to the proposal that we put forward on infrastructure yesterday, uh, what we've actually seen in comparison to a $4 billion fund that it applies to cities right across the country is uh, a proposal to cut that fund and replace it with a merely $100 million fund that applies only to about two dozen cities across the country and doesn't reward them for things within their control, but rewards or punishes them based on things that happen to take place in their community rather than the decisions that they actually take to uh, allow home building to uh, to happen more easily, more quickly. I'd be happy to, uh, to dig in as part of follow-up, but I want to respect the time of others on the call. Uh, but there's a number of distinct changes. And in fact, Mr. Polyev's plan would actually result in fewer homes being built than we are already on pace to construct. Merci beaucoup. Prochaine question, Hélène Bussetti, des co de l'information. Yes, hello, Mr. Uh, Fraser. Can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, yes, I can hear you. Oh, okay, sorry about that. Um, yeah, I wanted to ask you as, as well questions about yesterday's announcement, the uh, Housing Infrastructure Fund. Um, it's regarding the as of right that there's two uh, prongs to my question. Um, one of the thing is, uh, you know, there has to be a ha uh, has of right for four plexes. And I was, I thought it was already in the uh, accelerating, uh, the accelerator program. So can you just clarify that? But more specifically, the as of right for the design that will come from the federal catalog, does that mean that all models would have to be accepted by cities anywhere on their territory? So let's say a city has a zone where there's only a four-story limit. 
Um, if someone wants to build a six-story building uh, taken out of the catalog, the city has nothing to do to say about it. So can you clarify those two things, please? Thanks. Uh, so, yes, uh, thank you very much for the question. Uh, first, uh, there are some similarities with the Housing Accelerator Fund. However, not all communities have adopted, uh, have successfully concluded a Housing Accelerator Fund commitment. All of the big cities that we have dealt with have agreed to move forward with four units as of right zoning. Some of them still have to go implement those changes, but they've signed agreements indicating that they will. And the ability to receive funds through the program is contingent upon them actually making good on those commitments. The announcement yesterday would have broader application and would require provinces to essentially change the rules to say municipalities can't make it illegal to build a fourplex during a national housing crisis, uh, because we know that when some Somebody has the ability to build a small apartment on land that they already own, uh, we can leverage uh, a, a new solution to the housing crisis. And in my view, uh, we should. Uh, so we are inviting provinces to make the kinds of changes that will allow us to get the most out of our infrastructure money uh, from a terms of housing output, but also to save people money on infrastructure going forward. Just for clarity, although it's, it's primarily motivated by getting more housing output, when you actually build houses where infrastructure already exists, services already exist, opportunities already exist, you save over time billions of dollars in future infrastructure investments. If we're going to be putting federal money on the table, we want to make sure the communities that we're funding and the provinces that we're reaching agreements with are actually making the decisions that's going to responsibly uh, mitigate against unnecessary infrastructure uh, expenses going forward. Uh, the second piece to your question uh, related to the uh, catalog that we are uh, working to develop now, uh, we want to uh, also uh, negotiate the pre-approval of design included in that catalog, which is being consulted upon now, because we're trying to align the manufacture, the design, the financing, and the municipal pre-approval for certain kinds of buildings to accelerate the process of not just getting them built, but getting them approved so they can actually provide housing to Canadians. When we uh, work to develop these new designs, make them available for free, and work with communities to ensure they can be approved, we're going to create that opportunity to dramatically speed up the process and create economies of scale for designs that will be included in the catalog. Uh, so all of this has been connected, and it's not a coincidence that we're uh, uh, digging into some degree on four units as of right, because in many cities across Canada, that's actually actually where the economics uh, tip in favor of going ahead with a the project. There's a lot of cities in this country where it's very difficult to justify an investment in a triplex, uh, but when you add a fourth unit and can count on additional income through rent or selling units, uh, you actually can make the project work. Uh, so all of these things from manufacturer design, financing, and pre-approval are connected. Uh, but to answer your question, we will be looking for the implementation of rules that allow as of right permissions for the designs that we make available for free in a national catalog. Okay. Well, it's, it's still not clear to me if a municipality would have to accept any design coming from the catalog on in any zoning, independently of the rules that apply to that zoning, if you could just clarify that. But my follow-up was about... Um, the freeze on development uh, development charges. And I'm just wondering whether or not it's not counterproductive because those charges are usually used to build the infrastructures related to housing. And yet your announcement is about funding the infrastructure for housing. So you're giving money on one hand, but preventing money on the other end. I'm, I'm, I, I don't see how coherent that is. Um, sure. Uh, so let me explain my um, uh, my, my uh, perspective on this. Uh, development cost charges do fund infrastructure in some communities, but they fund infrastructure by increasing the cost of housing directly. Uh, when you decide you're going to raise infrastructure through effectively uh, uh, increasing taxes on home building, you're going to get less home building as a result. <clears throat> There's many communities across the country that don't have development charges or have very modest development charges. However, uh, we want to say for those communities that have development charges in place, if you want to take advantage of the new housing infrastructure fund, uh, instead of using future development cost uh, charge increases, use the federal funding that we're making available. And if a community can uh, look at the equation and say, we can actually use the federal funding instead of increasing the cost of home building, we're going to be able to still build our 
infrastructure while we have greater housing output. Uh, so to me, it's a better way to actually fund the infrastructure that's necessary to unlock housing potential uh, rather than uh, effectively increasing taxes on home building uh, in order to build the infrastructure to support mo more homes because we know that will reduce housing output. And the catalog? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so, so the catalog. Look, perhaps, I, and I will, uh, we'll, we'll follow up on the details. But we want the the designs to have as of right approval. But if there's an area that's zoned for four units and a mid-rise building that subsequently becomes available in the catalog, that would be a, a different question. But we'll happy fo happily follow up just so we make time for other journalists on the call. Thanks. Merci, Alain. Next question, Melanie Marquis, La Presse. Yes, uh, thank you. My first question is for Mr. Fraser. So since last week, have you had discussions with uh, some of your Quebec counterparts, whether it's um, Minister uh, Francine Duranceau or Jean-François Roberge? Uh, and if so, what transpired from that discussion? And if not, why have you not reached out? Uh, so I've had uh, recent uh, points of contact uh, with uh, Mr. Duranceau, uh, so des, uh, uh, des enjeux pour uh, construire des logements abordables, mais uh, on ne gênait pas les conversations uh, après l'annonce juste ici hier. Uh, Oh, sorry, my, my own interpretation is interfering with it. Um, I, I also uh, uh, frequently stay in touch. In fact, I just uh, not long ago received a text from one of my other uh, counterparts in Quebec uh, about uh, some transportation uh, infrastructure issues that we're, we're monitoring. Uh, so we will be having conversations in the weeks ahead specific to some of the announcements that have rolled out as recently as today and yesterday, both of which uh, engage the need to negotiate with provincial uh, counterparts. Uh, but since the uh, specific announcement yesterday, I, I have not uh, been in touch, but uh, I expect over the next number of days, uh, I'll be in touch with um, a few of my Quebec counterparts. Okay, puis je vais, je vais poursuivre avec une deuxième question pour euh, Madame Martina Sferrada. Euh, ma, la mairesse de Montréal, vous êtes montréalaise, la mairesse de Montréal, euh, Valérie Plante, a écrit aujourd'hui, a réagi à votre annonce du jour en disant que Montréal sera au rendez-vous pour accélérer l'accès à des logements abordables. Est-ce que ça veut dire peut-être que le fédéral pourrait envisager passer directement par les municipalités puis contourner Québec? Puis sinon, qu'est-ce que vous avez comme message pour le gouvernement du Québec qui a accueilli euh, assez tièdement, pour être poli, les, les annonces que vous faites depuis, le, depuis quelques jours en matière de logement? Oui, merci, Mme Marquis, pour la question. Vous savez très bien qu'au niveau euh, du Québec, euh, la loi sur euh, les affaires municipales euh, nous prévient d'envoyer de, de l'argent directement dans les municipalités. Nous nous sommes toujours entendus avec Québec. D'ailleurs, l'entente que nous avons conclue avec Québec sur le programme d'accélérateur de logement nous a permis non seulement d'investir 900 millions, mais Québec a aussi euh, accoté ce financement pour euh, finalement avoir euh, négocié 1,8 milliard de dollars dont un, un des investissements les plus importants euh, que le Québec a eu dans euh, le logement. Donc, moi, je suis très confiante euh, que nous allons pouvoir nous entendre avec Québec pour les annonces que nous, que nous avons faites cette semaine. Moi, je suis très contente de voir que euh, Montréal et d'autres municipalités euh, sont heureux de voir que euh, le gouvernement fédéral réinvestit encore dans le logement. Puis, je suis encore euh, très confiante que nous allons pouvoir nous entendre avec Québec pour soutenir euh, les diverses municipalités au Québec, dont Montréal, Québec et les autres euh, municipalités. Merci, Mélanie. Next question, David Baxter from Global News. Hello, uh, good afternoon, Minister. Thanks for taking the, the questions. Um, yeah, I just want to go back to uh, the catalog here. Uh, about when can people expect to start to see an update on what exactly the designs are going to be looking like in this catalog so cities can know what they may or may not be giving um, as of right um, zoning to? Uh, thanks very much. We we expect that we're going to have the first tranche of designs uh, ready uh, this calendar year, uh, likely in the fall, uh, with a few dozen designs uh, that spread across different building types. Uh, we're going to aim to have uh, the first tranche include some small multiplexes and accessory dwelling units. Uh, we will eventually be producing designs for some larger buildings and single family homes as well. Uh, but in the uh, intervening period, the focus is on some of these uh, quick wins uh, that we believe uh, can be uh, uh, delivered uh, this calendar year to enable us to get this uh, effort off the ground. Uh, we have been having conversations with some um, home manufacturers uh, who uh, use a range of technologies, whether it's modular panelization, 
uh, mass timber and others. Uh, we also have been having some conversations uh, with uh, uh, different levels of government across the country, but we will make sure that the perspective of what can be built uh, in a cost-effective, uh, labor-efficient manner uh, to, to include in designs that uh, we hope to have ready for this fall. Uh, but we should have um, uh, approximately 50 designs uh, available across this range of uh, different building types by the end of this year. Awesome. Thank you. And uh, yeah, and on the uh, infrastructure fund and negotiating with the provinces, I've uh, reached out to all the provinces and territories this morning. I've heard back from most of them at this point and among the ones that responded, uh, namely Ontario, Quebec, Saskatchewan, Alberta, New Brun and New Brunswick, <clears throat> uh, all saying that they wish there would be more consultation ahead of this this announcement on what you're pitching here. And they are worried about um, intrusions on their jurisdiction when it comes to solving the housing crisis. When it comes to solving the housing crisis, so why not talk to them ahead of uh, putting out this pitch for the as of right um, the as of right mandate there? And is there any wiggle room in the negotiations since there's only about eight months to get these deals done before that money goes to the cities? Uh, so right now we have no time to waste. Uh, this is a housing crisis and we need to treat it like a crisis. Uh, we need to do everything we can as quickly as we can. And it should come as no surprise, uh, frankly, uh, given the uh, rollout of the Housing Accelerator Fund beginning of September, that the federal government has a clear interest in incentivizing four units as of right, particularly in larger cities across the country. Now, I'm willing to have conversations with all of my counterparts about the proposal and working with them to get to a place where we can incentivize changes at the municipal level that are going to dramatically increase the pace of home building and allow more Canadians to be part of the solution by building homes for their neighbors on land that they already own, where infrastructure already exists. However, if their real concern is around uh, jurisdictional challenges, uh, uh, I would remind folks that the federal spending power uh, doesn't necessarily need to touch explicitly on uh, uh, areas that are outlined in Section 91 of the Constitution. Uh, we engage in health care by providing transfers to the provinces. We have engaged in municipal zoning issues over the past few months through the Housing Accelerator Fund. If provinces don't want to make some of the changes, uh, they don't have to accept the funding that we're putting on the table. But this is billions of dollars in funding to build infrastructure that my provincial counterparts have told me is essential. And if they don't want to deal with us directly, uh, we do have a direct delivery stream that will allow municipalities to apply uh, to tap into these funds. And we would expect that those municipalities are also implementing some of the most ambitious measures. One of the pieces that I take comfort in, given my experience with the role of the Housing Accelerator Fund, is there's not a shortage of communities who are demonstrating the level of ambition that we want to see. And I have full confidence that we can identify partners that will allow us to roll out this $6 billion infrastructure program in exchange for allowing policies that facilitate home building very quickly and in a cost-effective way. Uh, so we will be making these investments precisely who we deal with and on what timeline uh, will uh, be uh, impacted through the discussions we have with provinces. But my sincere hope is that we can work with our provincial counterparts to implement the kinds of changes that will solve the housing crisis. And we want to put federal, on the, uh, federal investments on the table to help make that happen. Perfect. Thanks, Minister. Thank you, David. I don't see any more questions online. And oh, so yeah. this is what concludes uh, the press conference today. Thank you, Ministers. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Thank you. Bye, Soraya. Bye. Bye, John.